You guys want to see something cool? What's really nice about living out here in the country where I do is when you look out the window, you get such a great view of just nature. Fudge. <laughs> That's right, folks. We've got septic issues. We're not talking about your little run-of-the-mill septic issues. We're talking about major freaking problems. Holy sh Look at this right here. Oh my lord. You guys might notice this really green patch of grass right here when all the rest of the backyard grass is just kind of like normal winter looking grass. The reason why it's so green and plush right there is because it's receiving fertilizer directly from our septic tank. And that's not even the only spot. There's multiple spots. There's another one right here where this red bucket is. It's being fueled by literal sh So you could basically say the sh is flowing here at the house. It's flowing so well, it's bubbling up into the backyard. Coincidentally, this is also flowing on YouTube right now. God, we gotta get inside, it's freaking cold out here. Come on, Charlie. I am sure you guys are aware of uh, some of the random things that are going on on YouTube right now. Of course, I'm talking about some of the craziness going on in the fishing YouTube community. Over the last few days, there's been a couple different videos that have come out, and uh, the result of those videos coming out is a ton of people are joining in on the conversation. So there's two specific videos that I'm talking about. The first video is my good friend old fishing with Yak Pack, old TJ Yak Sack, as I have affectionately called him for many years. One of my oldest buddies on YouTube announced that he's leaving the Guggen Squad. And he's no longer working with Guggen Squad and Guggen Baits, all that good stuff. That was obviously a shock to a lot of people. I wasn't really shocked, but we'll get into more about how I feel in a little bit. But in that video, he spent about 20 minutes kind of just talking about Guggen and his relationship with Guggen and everybody at Guggen. And it was mostly positive things, but there were some negatives mentioned as well. And obviously that video has got a lot of views. A lot of people want to hear anything negative about Guggen, right? It's normally trending to hear something negative about Guggen. The second video, which coincidentally came out the next day, was from our old Rob Turkla, AKA Lunkers TV, one of the founding members of the Guggen Squad. And he put out a video responding to Ben Milliken, AKA Milliken Fishing, in direct response to Milliken's video like three years ago when he called out Guggen Squad and he said that we were ripping off other baits and ripping off bait designs and specifically Sixth Sense. So obviously these two videos had a huge reaction from everybody that pays attention to the YouTube fishing world and the community. And a lot of the comments are split like right down the middle. You've got a lot of people who love to see anything negative about Guggen Squad. That shouldn't be breaking news to anybody. It's one of the most hated brands in the industry, but also one of the most popular. And then the other half of the aisle is total Guggen support. People that have been supportive of the brand and understand why the brand was created because Guggen's couldn't work with any of the mainstream brands because they all laughed at the Guggen's. So it's kind of a duality, weird, antagonistic relationship going on right now. I would highly encourage you guys to go watch both of those videos and then specifically get down in the comment section, get you a little bowl of popcorn and just scroll through and read some comments. It's some pretty wild stuff going on down there. And all this conversation is about Guggen. So it's got a lot of people talking, a lot of people speculating. Here's the thing about speculation. I personally try to never speculate on something if I have no info, right? If I, if I really don't know what's going on behind the scenes, I try not to speculate. But most people love to speculate. You get to just throw rumors out there onto the internet with no basis, with no evidence or anything. You just get to hurl your opinion out there as if it's fact which is one of the main things that makes the internet and YouTube such a wild, wild west. But in this video, I'm going to talk to you guys about all of the things that I know to be true. I'm not gonna speculate on things that may or may not be true. I'm gonna tell you the straight dope on everything that I know about these situations. I hope you folks had your seatbelts on. I hope that your tray table is in an upright and locked position because we're about to take off, folks. So let's start this conversation off talking about our good friend, old Yak Pack. And just to give some context here, Yak Pack and I have been YouTube buddies and friends for at least seven years now. This relationship goes back to probably 2016, 2017. In fact, besides Norm, who was like the first person that I ever collabed with and my first YouTube friend, Yak Pack was like right after that. If there's one thing that I can tell you about Yak Pack above all else is the dude is loyal. 
I mean, he is incredibly loyal. And loyalty is one of those values and virtues that I place a ton of emphasis on. And you don't see it that much nowadays. There's not a lot of loyalty. Most of the time you see people doing what's best for them and they just throw everything else out the window, forget loyalty, forget everything. Not Yak Pack. That is not him. Dude has been loyal to his good friends. He's been loyal to companies he's worked with. He's been incredibly loyal to Guggen. And that was one reason why I was pretty sad when I saw that he was leaving. I mean, the memories are just endless. I'm sitting here thinking of all the different times that uh, I've had him on the podcast, when we had the Fishing After Dark podcast. He was on that numerous times. All the videos I've done with him, all the Guggen Week trips that he was on and I was on, and all the different memories from those trips. I could get in trouble telling some of the stories with me and Yak Pack and a bunch of other people at Guggen Weeks and just different times in our lives. But I watched Yak Pack's video. I watched it from beginning to end. And you know, there was very little negativity. I mean, most of what he was saying was just thankful to Guggen for giving him an opportunity, thankful for all the memories, thankful for the loyalty that they showed to him for a long time. So that was good. You know, I feel like that's the right thing to do in that situation, you know, not bad mouthing the company that you're walking away from, more or less just kind of making peace with it and then walking away, you know, in a friendly fashion. Oh, <laughs> don't worry, Rob. I'm gonna get to you in just a minute, buddy. The big thing that I took away from his video was when he got to the negative part of his experience with Guggen, which like I said, there was not a lot, but he mentioned something that was very interesting to me and I can actually relate to it. He mentions about three quarters of the way through the video that it kind of felt like he was out of place sometimes or that he was the last resort, like the last person to be invited to a Guggen Week or just that feeling of not quite belonging, you know, at these Guggen events. And I have to be honest, there's been a couple times in my journey and my career, and I've been working with Guggen longer than TJ Yak Pack has, you know? There's been times where I felt the exact same way. And that's gonna surprise a lot of people, but there's been times where I was kind of unhappy with how I was being treated um, from a Guggen perspective. And sometimes I didn't feel like I fit in that well with like the original guys, you know? That's why it was so awesome to have people like Yak Pack and AO and Norm coming to Guggen Weeks because those guys were guys that I was so close with and I had a relationship with them before Guggen that they made me a lot more comfortable when they were there. Luckily, within the last year or so at Guggen, there's been a lot of changes um, from the very top down. So not just staff changes internally, but creator changes, pro staff changes. And because of that, I feel much more at home now than I did at certain points of time in the past with Guggen. So I definitely understood where he was coming from in that aspect, but I commend him. I mean, he stuck with Guggen for a long time. He was very loyal to the brand. He's been repping the brand forever, it seems like. And I'm one of those people, I'm never gonna judge a man negatively for making a decision that's best for him. You know, if he's put in the time, he's put in the thought, and he's sure about it, then hey, God bless you. I tip my cap to you, no hard feelings from me. I wish him nothing but love, success, and an awesome life, which I hope he will have, and I'm sure he will. And I'm hopeful that the book on myself and Yak Pack is not yet closed all the way. Although he's walked away from Guggen, that doesn't mean that me and him can't be friends. In fact, I've talked to TJ since he put that video out, and I was like, hey man, you know, sorry to hear that you're leaving, but just so you know, nothing but love from me. And he responded back right away, said the same thing, like, yeah, bro, business, nothing personal, we're still tight, cool. There's a lot of people who just see a title of a video and a thumbnail and they just think that they already know what the video is about. For example, if you look at that video, the name of the video is Leaving Guggen Squad, dot, dot, dot. And the thumbnail is kind of TJ looking like, eh, you know, like, like, oh no, this is not good. So a lot of people will just see that and they'll just assume right out of the gate, oh, TJ's leaving Guggen, he hates Guggen, Guggen's bad. And if you watch the video, you realize it's nothing like that, but that's kind of YouTube. You know, that's how us YouTubers make sure that our videos get optimum views and optimum visibility is we have to frame them in a way where it almost seems like there's drama going on, even when there's not. But that's what's gonna kind of tie this whole video together is just, the Guggen Squad drama machine that it has turned out to be. I feel like this gets forgotten quite a bit about Guggen Squad, just in general, as a brand, as a company, as a YouTube force. Guggen Squad only became, it only exists because 
the original Guggen members couldn't work with any of the mainstream fishing companies. At that time, back in 2017, 18, mainstream fishing brands and companies, we're talking about rod reel manufacturers, bait manufacturers, they literally laughed at these guys. They literally laughed them out of meetings. They wouldn't give these guys the time of day. That's what prompted the original Guggen Squad to form and to create their own brand, and then to create Guggen Baits. This was all a direct result of them being mocked by an entire industry. And I feel like that fact gets forgotten quite a bit when talking about Guggen Squad now, just because of how much success that the squad and the brand has achieved. Which ties us in very nicely to the next subject that we're gonna talk about. As our good friend Rob Turkla Lunkers TV is calling me, Let's dive right into his little video recently, shall we? <laughs> I'm sure you guys have seen it by now. Lunkers TV put out a video, my response to Ben Milliken, you know, the truth. Once again, going back to what I said about Yakpak's video, title and thumbnail, you know, how they kind of give you a perception that there's this huge negative thing happening. It's just YouTube. That's the, the most simple way I can describe it. For those of you who are lost, which none of you should be, old Ben Milliken, Milliken Fishing, put out a video about four years ago now. I think it was January the 1st, four years ago. I'm gonna pull it up right now so I get all the facts right. All right, so the video that Milliken originally made four years ago, the title is, Did Guggen Baits Knock Off Six Cents Baits? Question mark, question mark, question mark, in parentheses, unbelievable. So obviously, title and thumbnail, you're thinking, oh my God, Guggen ripped off six cents. How terrible. And then he, you know, he goes on to weigh a bunch of different baits, uh, cuts them open, he talks about the internals, he talks about the designs and how similar they look. And obviously that stirred up a lot of controversy at the time because at that time, Guggen was kind of dominating, right? And Six Cents was kind of trying to come up. Six Sense was like Guggen's little brother at that time. And according to some people, they still are. But I found it to be ridiculous when I first watched it because I knew that a lot of the things that Milliken was asserting or the things that he was implying, he wasn't just outright saying it, but he was implying certain things. I knew that most of that was BS. It just was completely untrue. So much so to where we made a podcast about it one year after he made that original video. You guys should remember the very first episode of Fishing After Dark, which was the podcast that I started, and then AO was my co-host at that time. That was literally the second podcast that I had ever made, and the title of that was The Truth About Me and Kicking Their Bass TV, who was somebody who I had collabed with earlier, Milliken Fishing versus Guggen. In that podcast, I touched on a lot of this stuff, and we went through and we kind of clowned Milliken a little bit. I mean, it's a comedy podcast. That was kind of the whole point of it. We kind of clowned on him a little bit, and we brought up all the different ways that we thought it was just nonsense what he was saying. By the way, Milliken Fishing himself commented on that podcast saying something to the effect of that he wanted to be a guest and he, without editing, you know, and he wanted to have a debate and like do it live to where we couldn't edit it and make them look bad or whatever, to which I responded to, and I was like, bro, anytime, you're welcome. I also DM'd him on Instagram to kind of reaffirm that stance, that hey man, if you wanna hop on the podcast, let's do this. He read it, he left me on red, never responded. So take that for whatever it's worth. So if you guys wanna go check out that podcast, you definitely should. I don't wanna to try to recap everything that was said. It was like an 45 minute podcast, but we had some good fun at Milliken's expense. So when Lunkers TV put out that video like a week ago, I was so shocked and I laughed so hard because I knew he was about to go in on Milliken. And he did. First of all, you gotta give Rob credit here, okay? The man puts on the lab coat, the man's got the set all set up. It looks like he's doing science experiments. Oh my God, it's so good. The cringe is so good. And he just kind of proceeds to, I don't want to say roast Sixth Sense because he actually goes out of his way to say, hey, I'm not attacking Sixth Sense. I'm just attacking this guy and the things that he was saying about us. And he went on to drop some some pretty damning information that kind of kills Milliken's entire case, if you ask me. The whole bait engineer thing. If you guys haven't seen Rob's video, you should definitely go watch it. It's really short. It, it doesn't take up a lot of your time. But he goes on to kind of explain that 
At that time, so we're talking about four or five years ago when these baits were in development, when our hard baits were being developed, right around the time that Sixth Sense hard baits were being developed, at one point in time, we actually had the same bait engineer. So obviously there's going to be similarities there, but it was not an overt stealing thing, which was what Milliken was kind of implying that Guggen, I mean, that the title of his video did Guggen rip off Six Sense Fishing. And the answer to that question is, well, is it ripping somebody off to have the same engineer working on both of your baits? And because of that, there are similarities. That's not the same thing. But I tip my cap to Rob. The man is never afraid to be right in the middle of controversy. I mean, he said it himself. Like, he, he's willing to be the punching bag for this brand. Like, he legitimately does not care about criticism. It's one of the things I really admire about him. You know, me and Rob are friends, and so we're, we're pretty tight. And the guy just, he does not care about criticism. I'm telling you guys, you've got to go to all these videos that I'm mentioning. you got to go in the comment section. That's where the real entertainment is. Aside from the actual videos and the content themselves, the comment section are just wild on all of these videos. The opinions that people are throwing out there, I mean, it is just, it's, it's what makes the internet the internet. It's what makes YouTube like this huge force, but also this volatile environment. And I love it, to be honest with you. But hey, Milliken's a good fisherman, right? That's what people are probably saying in the comment section of this video right now. Well, Milliken's a really good fisherman. You're just mad that he's a better fisherman. I can assure you, me or Robert Turkle does not care that Milliken is a better fisherman. I'll admit it right now. He's a much better fisherman than me. I never took myself that seriously as an angler. You know, I never wanted to, well, I did want to be a tournament angler for like five seconds and then I realized, okay, this is not for you, buddy. But being a good angler does not mean that you're a good bait designer, as Rob Turkless stated in his video very eloquently. And also being a good angler does not mean that you're always right about everything that you say. But let's just be honest, what Milliken did in that video was he tried to stir up controversy because what controversy breeds is higher sales right? Higher numbers, higher views, more people talking about your brand. And that's all he wanted to do. It's marketing 101, guys. That's what it is. And it works. Have you ever heard the expression, there's no such thing as bad publicity? Well, that's true. Publicity is publicity. And so I think that's what frustrated a lot of people was we all knew that that's what Milliken was doing. But you know, a lot of people took it on face value. And ever since then, people have been claiming that Guggen knocked off Six Cents, which is just the, one of the most absurd assertions that I've ever heard. And remember, like I said in the beginning, I don't speculate about things unless I know enough information to where I don't look like an idiot. And I know enough information on this particular subject to know that the things that he was saying were completely untrue. That's why there was never a lawsuit filed from Six Cents against Guggen. That's why Milliken really won't talk about it anymore now is because he doesn't have a leg to stand on. And Six Cents is probably doing well enough now where they don't need to do that. But it all makes for some really entertaining YouTube content. I would love to hear your guys' opinions in the comment section. I already know there's some wild opinions in there already. Please feel free to get down in there and let me know what you think. Let me know what you've heard about these situations. But the overwhelming sentiment for me is, I love Yak Pack. I'm not gonna stop loving him because he doesn't work for the same brand as me anymore. Oh, all this drama is making me thirsty. Speaking of Guggen Squad, remember guys, at GuggenSquad.com, you can find everything from fishing rods and reels to bait and tackle, storage tools, everything. And some pretty sweet apparel. And when you use my code LOJO at checkout, you get 10% off your order. Folks, I hope you enjoy this video. Be on the lookout for a best neighbor Daryl moments of last year very soon. I'm literally working on that right now as I sit here to film this video. Get in that comment section. Like I said, I want to hear from you guys. I want to hear from the people. And as always, I'm just sitting here in Southeast Alabama just chilling, just trying to find my place in the world. Thank you guys for watching so much. Thank you guys for being subscribed to the channel. I'll see you folks next time.